um, dear IAC. It's been a great privilege again to meet you all in this day to share the word of God. We had uh, a wonderful service going on and it is, starts with the great thing God be transformed. Let us be the church that get transformed through God's love and drive the fear out of us. Let us pray and start. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful Sunday Master. Lord, you have given us the grace to come together and worship you on this auspicious day that you have selected for us, Lord. That, that this is the greatest privilege that many people don't have in this world right now. But you have showered the grace upon our church to gather in your presence, Master. As you bring this message, Lord, you speak through me. You cover me with your Holy Spirit and anoint me with your Holy Spirit so that none of the words that I speak is of my flesh, that it is, it should be of your spirit, Master. Thank you for such a blessing that you have shepherd upon us. We ask that today's meditation will be pleasing unto you and shall transform our lives and take our church to the next levels. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Today, I just want to continue with where we left. Fear and God but in a different perspective. Let us quickly have a recap of what we have seen last week. If there is a fear, then we tend to lose focus on God. When fear strikes us, it is easily that fear can confuse us. Then fear can lose the faith in God. Fear can lead us to make commit sins. And at last, fear can make us send wrong messages instead of positive messages that as Christians we need to speak for. In the same perspective, what we are seeing, going to see today is fear and God, but in a different perspective, how it's love. We read in the scripture today, 1 John 4, 18 clearly says, There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with the punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. How this word touched me when I was reading through it. Love drives out fear. How come love drives out fear? It is very clearly saying there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. When we are afraid, how the perfect love drives out fear? When we read the whole scripture, it is clearly states in the verse 8 whoever does not love does not know God because God is love it is very clearly evident the Bible again says again again and again it says God is love because love fears that's why it has been clearly stated that Love drives out fear. That means if God's love is with us, it drives out fear. Dear friends, it has been clearly stated, let us love one another for love comes from God. It doesn't come from man. It is not the way 
that man loves, but how, just God, how God loved us. See the difference between the God's love and our love. How God has shown his love among us. He sent his one and only son to the world that we might live through him. That is the kind of love that God wants to see in us. In the verse 10, it is clearly stating what is love? This is love. Because it is not because we love God. It, because he loved us, he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. It is that love that can drive out the fear. It is because God is love and God fear drives out fear. If that love overpours us, there is no fear that can come and attack us. We are living in a desperate situation. COVID is seen everywhere. There are natural calamities across, across boards. But amidst of this, God is telling us, let us love one another. Because love drives out fear. It is very clearly again and again saying, remember one thing when it all comes through the fear, it always says, let's understand the God's love for us. In the Gethsemane, he was even in the, in the deepest sorrow has, has been praying to God, Lord, if it is your will, let this cup pass away from me. It is in this deepest sorrow. He knows he, what he came for. He came for it as an atoning sacrifice. That is the true love. He didn't expect anything from us. God wants us to love our neighbors, our, our friends, like the same love that God showered upon us. And that really drives out the fear. Verse 16 clearly says, and so we now rely on the love God has for us. Again saying, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Because of which, in verse 18, it clearly says, there is no fear in love. It is because, again, it is not that we try to love. It is because we love that God lives in us. It is when God lives in us, the love of the God flows through us. And that really drives out fear. It is given us as a commandment. It is not Jesus, God requesting, please love one another. It is saying, it is saying as the command, anyone who loves God must love their brother and sister. It is a command through which it really drives out the fear. I want to share two different testimonies today that I came across in my life. If you see in the picture, the left, there is a guy who is raising his hand. When we are studying in Karnia, um, between 2003 to 2005, um, I have seen this man in my life. Literally, he's a mentally retarded guy who walks around in very pathetic dressing with a big beard and knotted uh, hairs. He goes and sometimes he comes and uh, he, he will not able to, he's not able to speak. 
that is one friend in our midst he is a close friend of mine he saw that different it is easy for us to afraid of this guy and move away but instead that guy went and sp- speak to him he would not speak first he went away continuously he was speaking then he was able to share food from one of the neighboring nearby the road shade shops to him and saying that give him every day some food and this he was paying for them ultimately one day it, it, when i when i saw that how love can break the fear as this guy went along with some of the friends took the guy who is mentally retarded clothed him with better clothes shaved him cut his hair and he was a different person i have seen on the next day he was not the same person that i was seeing there he doesn't stop from there he took him to a mentally retarded home and put him in the coimbatore and we all left the college on 2005 and he shared a wonderful story in facebook after 12 years during 2017 he doesn't know where he what his name was they named these guys when they put into the put him into the um, uh, the it is called the little hearts home they named him alex and then he left we all went in our own ways he got a job in chennai he continued to work through little different ngos after 12 years the same little hearts organization in chennai he was contact and he was able to share some of this with them and then from the group there they told us that the same story with a different person's name called babu and then he realized babu and alex are same because he started talking after being put it in the, put into the home and he realized he slowly things came through and he knows his own name babu and after 12 years he slowly started he got better and better and what happened he was able to remember where he came from where his parents were and all those things after 15 years of separation this man was rejoined with his mom and dad and his family it is easy for us to fear and move away from these kind of persons when we see in the roads but that is one person in my as is my friend who took the courage because love god's love flown through him which drives out the fear of talking to a person it is easy for us to see that person as a mentally retarded retarded person who can come and attack us but there is people who are go in god's name and love without any fear changes lives of the person he didn't stop there he was doing a lot of amazing work difference and during this covid time through a low bundle challenge he was reached 11000 families he gave dry rations to the project rebuild he rebuilt 80 families the one on the right as a different story altogether the husband was the only earning person in that family during that covid situation they his husband lost the job and unfortunately during the covid situation due to some other reasons his husband passed away they don't have anything to do they don't have money they don't have food through the project rebuild they start they gave a small dry rations and started them to help in avadasha this is love we can lock ourselves in the, ourselves in the home do nothing about this covid situation but there are people who go and help people because of god's love sometimes it is easy for us to run away not to buy from these kind of shops and say no covid can come to our homes but there are people losing their lives what is the love that we are showing upon us 
What is the love that we are sharing? Because love drives out fear. Before COVID situation and after COVID situation, things may not be the same. The places that you went, if you're not able to help, it might be get closed. I was very fortunate to have some friends to spend some quality time during this COVID situations. I want to share another story where when we were sharing things, it really touched and changed some of the thought process that I had during this COVID situation. Their kids were going to take one though. And unfortunately, during this COVID situation, initially everything was shut down and there were furloughs and all those things happening around. And those persons reached to this family and asked like, can you please continue paying your monthly thing so that like we just stay afloat for some time and we figure out what we can do later. And what they have said to me is it really touched. Like we are getting the same salary that what we were getting before COVID or during COVID. And if it is not a for COVID situation, I would still send my kids to that location. So let's pay that. It's changed the perspective of why we are helping someone out of love. Out of God's love that flows through us. I, it is very disheartening for me to see some things that happened. We were, we were like, there are, we were like regular badminton buddies that we went, we go ahead and play badminton in a place where it had eight courts. It's a separate court. Now, because of that COVID situation, the change changed and it is no more there. And it has been changed to a place where it has only three courts and confined with a place where there are other things happening around. And that's when I decided, I also, it was a very, when, when, when things that came and became a little better, the same man who was running that court reached to me asking my kids, can, can they come to the coaching? And I was like, yes, let's go on. And I was a little bit afraid and see how they are doing it and everything. I went and watched how they were handling things on the first day. And I was so happy. And then I, they're still going on. This is a COVID situation easily that we can just by the sake of fear, we can be locked ourselves in our homes. Do nothing about it. Don't we, we are not ready to share sometimes. But if there is God's love, it drives out fear. It is very clearly evident that fear will be driven out only through this love. Can, if, if all these things we are talking about, can fear not strike us? Of course. Fear, there are instances we can go and read in the Bible, even the great men of God, Fear strikers, they ran from a place. If you see Elijah, he massacred 450. The other prophets, he brought down fire from heaven. He was standing tall amidst of all them. One and one Elijah. Immediately after he's, he knows that they are trying to take this life, he ran away from fear. Out of fear, he ran, 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 and he went inside and tried to hide himself inside a bush. When fear strikes the same Peter, he denied Jesus for three times. There is, there is always fear strikes us. But what should we do when the fear strikes? As Christians... 
we should remember who we are and what we have been given. Isaiah 43, 1 says, No, the, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name and you are mine. We are his. Remember the clear things. We should not able to fear. Why? Because I am his. What God has given is he has given the spirit. The Holy Spirit which makes you not to live in fear again. Romans 8.15 clearly says that rather the spirit that you have received brought yourself into adoption of sonship. We have given the liberty of talking to God as above father. No one else has given in this world. He is the spiritual father of our life. Whom else I should fear? For what I should fear? It is clearly stating the spirit you receive does not make you to live in fear again. Remember that you are son of God. God is saying you are mine. Second one seven says the spirit of God that gave us does not make us timid. What is timid? It is showing lack of courage or confidence and easily frightened. It is not that spirit God has given us. But he has given us the power and love and self-discipline. The spirit of God, when it flows through us, it makes us to love more than that we can think of. It is beyond the sacrificial love. It is beyond whatever that we can think of, we can do it. Just through love. Because that God's love will drive the fear out of us. It is not possible if you try to love of your own strength. It is because if God is in you, that love flows through you. If the God's spirit in you, that makes you not to be timid. But it gives you the power and authority and also the love that can drive the fear out. Remember whom we serve. Psalms 21, 27, 1 says, The Lord, David says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my, of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? There is nothing that can overcome you. Because the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. It is not because I am brave. It is because Lord is my light and my salvation. And he is my stronghold. Psalms 46, 1 to 3. God is our refuge and strength. And ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give away, give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. That is the love that God wants us to show. Let us drive out the fear. Let us share the love. Remember whom we serve. Remember who we are when fear strikes you. Remember what had God given us. What kind of spirit God given us when the fear strikes you. And through which let's the God's love pour through us. That is why there is no fear. Love. Perfect love drives out fear. 
because how can we attain the perfect love when God lives in us and God's spirit lives in us that perfect love drives out every fear that we have in our lives remember one thing the one who fears is not made and made perfect in love the one who fears is not made perfect in love but perfect love drives out fear i want to take you through one of the songs and then we'll finish in prayer Let's hear this song and then we'll pray. My dear friends, again, God wants us to see through the love that God given us through which he drives out the fear in us and show the love that we need to show in this desperate times of needs among people and runkal you can take over we really want to thank uh, steven for the challenging message just listening to him and uh, the heart with which he has preached this word this word perfect love casts out all fear and because of god's perfect love for us we can trust him we have faith in him and we know that faith and fear are opposites when we have fear we don't have faith but even as we receive god's perfect love into our hearts we can be full of faith in him so thank you for those testimonies the stories and the challenge that this brings and i believe a message like this is not just about understanding understanding what uh, the importance of uh, receiving the love of god and moving away from fear it's more than that i believe it is a challenge for us to move into action sometimes we don't do things because we are fearful because we are limited we don't want to take risk we don't want to step out and i think what past, what uh, steven raja has really challenged us is step out more than faith more out of care for people and even as we care for people we will do things uh, that bless the change situations that bring in transformation so i don't know what each one of our situations are what opportunities are open to us but let us not be self-centered selfish fearful but let us be willing to stretch ourselves in sacrifice even as we want to bless others even as we want to express our love for others in faith and not in fear i think this covid time has been a time which has limited us but the rather than be limited let this time be a time where we stretch ourselves and are willing to move out and bless even as we know the perfect love of god for us so i'm going to close in prayer now and uh, i would like to encourage you and encourage myself that we really take this message to heart and that we are people men and women who are willing to sacrifice in order to be a blessing to others because of his love for us and our faith in him. Yes. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, so much for this word. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for the heart with which he has shared this word. Thank you for the illustrations that he has given us. And Lord, we pray that each one of us will be challenged. Lord, that we will not be selfish. We will not just think of ourselves and protecting ourselves. but lord we be willing to bless us lord we be willing to be your channel of blessing to us 
whatever it may be, Lord, financially, spiritually, emotionally, that we are available to be used of you to touch other lives. So, Lord, thank you for this word. I just pray for each one that we'll be stirred in our hearts and that when we go away, we will not just say, okay, service is over. We'll go away knowing that you want us to be one step closer to you, knowing that you want us to do more things, taking risk in faith, in love, so that many lives are touched. So I pray for your anointing to be upon each one of us. I pray your blessing upon Stephen as well as uh, he has uh, challenged us with this word. Lord, we pray for I see that we as a church will be a church full of love, without fear and full of faith. So Lord, we want to commit ourselves into your hands. We want to honor you, commit ourselves into your hands and ask Lord for your anointing to rest upon each one of us. That through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we will do great and mighty things. You have said even greater things we can do because you us. So thank you for this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.